Hey guys, I am really excited to bring you the most comprehensive list of nicknamed Seiko watch models on all of YouTube. It's over 30 watches in total. But before we begin, if you watch this video and feel like you got something good out of it, why not throw me a like and a sub? I really appreciate it. If you notice anything I got wrong, please put it in the comments. I appreciate all feedback and support. By the way, there is a sequel to this video already in the works about the weirdest Seiko watches ever made. So if you like the wild side of watches, you're going to love this. With all that out of the way, let's get into it. I present to you every single Seiko watch with a nickname. I'm a rocket man. 6139-6002. Pogue. Colonel William R. Pogue wore a similar watch during a NASA Skylab mission in 1973, giving this multicolored quartz chronograph its nickname. The red and blue bezel offsets nicely with a sunburst yellow dial to make a watch that is never understated, but always appreciated. Typically, there are only about five gonads inside each urchin. SNZ F1X Sea Urchin. The sea urchin probably got its name from the appearance of the lines around its dial. It's an automatic diver sporting the Seiko 7S63 movement, 100 meters of water resistance, and it measures 41 millimeters in diameter with a 46 millimeter lug to lug. The watch sports a mineral crystal, a unidirectional dive bezel, and a 40 hour power reserve. With many of these Seikos, the nickname makes more sense when you look at the watch from a few different angles. On this one, the absolute bounty of lines streaming out from the dial begins to resemble a sea urchin. If you squint a bit, that is. There are about 2,000 species of sea stars. SKZ-28X Starfish The Seiko starfish is much more obvious about its motifs than the sea urchin is, in much the same way that a starfish will eat a sea urchin by enveloping it. To place the urchin next to the starfish is to have its presence swallowed by the unabashed weirdness of the starfish's bezel. What I'm trying to say is that this watch should be the template for nicknames, because it is instantly identifiable to literally anyone at all that knows what a starfish is. Show it to your baby cousin, see if they can't tell. And I want everyone in America right now to look at me. Look at me smoking indoors. 7C6460XX Ashtray. It's not hard to tell where this quartz crusher gets its name, especially when seen from the side. Thanks to the tuna lineage baked into the case, these watches can withstand water pressures up to 600 meters deep, and the oversized bezel can take anything you throw at it. SBDC 00X Shogun The Shogun gets its name because its angular case looks like a samurai's helmet to some. It's a perfectly capable dive watch that many people call their own. Sumo has become Japan's national sport and a very popular form of entertainment. SBPX Sumo Nobody really knows where the Seiko Sumo gets its nickname. Some say it's the size combined with that triangular 12 o'clock marker on the bezel resembling a traditional hairstyle worn by the wrestlers. Some say it's because the face looks like a sumo ring. Either way, it's a stylish and functional diver. Someday this war's gonna end. 6105, Captain Willard. The Willard is named after Captain Willard, Martin Sheen's protagonist who famously wears the watch in Apocalypse Now. It's a pretty piece, and the Coppola connection makes it extra special for those Seiko fans that are also cinephiles. You know that we come in peace business? Bite me. SRP49X, Stargate. This watch, so named because the knock at the 12 o'clock position gives the watch a resemblance to the titular Stargate from the Stargate series, is a real cult classic, even among a brand catalog that contains many cult classics. SRP-C6X Bottle Cap One guess as to why this watch got its nickname. There is no screw down crown on the model, so it's not technically a dive watch but the bottle cap does have 100 meters of water resistance, making it an excellent explorer's watch. I don't believe it's technically a sports watch, but this is a perfect modern automatic watch for outdoor sports. The two-tone bronze version provides the most arresting effect out of all of them, and they can be picked up for a reasonable price. What? You went over my helmet? 6139-7100 Helmet 
This is another one that perfectly exemplifies its name. It is deep and looks a lot like a crosscut of Darth Vader's helmet. I'm personally shocked that the helmet doesn't get more love than it already does. The simplicity of Zen Buddhism really informed his design sense. SCXP-041, Chariot, Steve Jobs. There is much to be said about Steve Jobs, but no one can deny he was a design genius, so it's no wonder his Chariot dress watch was so beloved. Almost perfectly round, it's so sleek, so simple, so perfect. If Apple made quartz watches. 6138 Yachtsman UFO No wonder that the UFO is called what it is. Minus the pushers, that symmetrical oval design makes it look ready for a Roswell rendezvous. They're exceedingly popular on the used market, because on top of that strange design, it's a great looking watch with plenty of style. What's wrong? Snake! Snake! SKA-293, Kinetic. Big Boss. This is the first left-handed diver Seiko did. I've started to really love kinetics over the course of research for this video. Lefties are cool too, because the crown is guaranteed not to dig into your hand if you wear them on your left wrist. SKA-371 BFK. A more or less normal looking model. It's just huge, and the nickname makes it notable. Big F Kinetic. Now stand aside, worthy adversary. Tis but a scratch. A scratch? Your arm's off. SKXA XX Knight. There's an option for everyone in the Knight series. Whether you're more of a white knight or a black knight, you can get this watch in automatic, quartz, or kinetic. There are no limited edition models, and they're all fairly new, so the Knight makes an excellent beater for daily workwear in the trades. I personally love that baby blue quartz option. SKXA 53-55 Bullet Just take a look at those hour markers and tell me the bullet isn't aptly named. It comes in black and orange. SKZ211K1 Landshark Any watch with hands can be used to find north, but with the Atlas slash Landshark's internal compass bezel, you're really plotting a course. It's not a tumor. SNJ025 Arnie this is the watch that Arnold Schwarzenegger chose to wear in Predator, Commando, Raw Deal, Running Man, and Twins. It looks totally normal on his giant wrist, but it's a real statement for a person with a regular size wrist to strap one on. This is the first Anadigi diver, and it's awesome. Awe, true to Kaisar. SKA-28X, Caesar. The Caesar was given its nickname on the Watch You Seek forums, but I found it mentioned in another article first. Maybe nobody else calls it the Caesar, and it's just one dude's imperial quest to force meme his nickname all over the internet. Either way, it's a good looking watch. But am I not turtly enough for the turtle club? SRPX, Turtle. The Turtle is an entire series in the broad ranging prospects line, and it's ultra popular, with good reason, because these cushioned case watches are some of the ones that gave Seiko its bulletproof reputation. I'm watching you, Azaski. SCEN00X Monster. The monster has some big old bites out of the bottom half of its case to match with the pattern on the bezel, as if a massive sea monster ate it like corn on the cob. It's a bit of an acquired taste for lovers of classic dive watches, but if you want something aggressive and grabbable, it's a good choice. Special mention goes to the Dracula with red and white hour markers on a black dial, really leaning into the teeth motif. SRPX Samurai. Nowadays, it's pretty hard to tell where the samurai gets its name, but it used to have sword-shaped minute and hour hands. Still, it's a great normal Seiko diver. If this one interests you, there are endless color variants for your collecting pleasure. 6138 Bullhead Bullhead chronographs, so named because the pushers at the top look like the horns of a bull, are an entire class of chronograph produced by many companies. This is the Seiko version. SRP-043 Spork. The Spork got its name because it's half diver, half pilot, with a model number that spells Spork, if you have dyslexia. These watches are proof that when it comes to funky watches, Seiko can do anything from subtly strange to entirely weird. Boston makes me feel good. M516-4009 Voice Note Ghostbusters. This voice recorder watch is a supremely sought after collector's item. 
as is anything from Ghostbusters. Not bad for a plastic digital watch with a couple NES buttons on it, huh? Get away from her, you b SCED0XX, Giugiaro, Chronograph, Ripley. Italian designer Giorgetto Giugiaro created some absolutely gorgeous watches, and the Ripley is no exception. So named because it was Amanda Ripley's watch in the film Aliens, the originals are very hard to come by. And because they have plastic pushers, many come cracked. Thankfully, they are metal on the reissue. This watch is a real cult classic, and the combination of a circular case and simple rectangular block for the pushers make a watch that is futuristic, tool-like, yet surprisingly refined. It's as if the Omega Ploprof ditched the diving gear and put on a sharp suit. Hey, Bishop, man. Do the thing with the oh, please. Oh, come on, yeah, yeah. SKED0XX, Bishop. This is another Giugiaro design that appears in the film Alien, this time on the character Bishop. The case and pushers play with the notion of what one could consider to be a traditional chronograph. Round case? Yes. Pushers in a normal position? Yes. Still weird? Very. I made a decision and it was wrong. It was a bad call, Ripley. H556-5050, and a digi alarm chronograph. Burke. This analog digital combo watch appeared on the wrist of Carter Burke in the movie Aliens. It's plain and businesslike, with just a little futurism tucked in there with the digital display. It's a perfect fit for Burke's business first character, obsessed with the numbers. Fry half the city with this puppy. S234 5000 Pulse Meter Marine. You can see this watch on a Marine in Aliens. It's a little digital watch that maintains the same industrial sci-fi vibe as the other Aliens watches. They were originally sold with a chest strap to pick up your heart rate. You've wandered into our school of tuna, and we now have a taste of line. We've talked to ourselves. We've communicated. Tuna. Multiple references. The tuna is a legendary dive watch, spawned from a letter sent to Seiko in the 60s, complaining that their watches weren't robust enough. The result was the iconic monoblock case with tuna can looks. Seiko hasn't looked back since, producing numerous models with different colors and movements, ranging from quartz all the way to spring drive. I get your baby! Baby Tuna, multiple reference numbers. A smaller tuna that's still large and in charge. It's still a capable and beloved diving watch, just not quite as capable as its bigger brother. But hey, sometimes it's better to be a weekend warrior with a desk job. You're more approachable, and anyone can come along for the adventure. That's what the baby tuna is. I'm doing it. I'm not punk. I yeah. never said I was punk and I really like, claimed to be punk. SRP58X Mohawk. It's easy to see where this dive watch gets its nickname. Part of the popular Prospects line, this watch features a distinctive metal mohawk on the bezel that allows for easy grip with diving gloves. When this baby hits 88 miles per hour, you're gonna see some serious sh A826. Sport Tech, Doc Brown. This voice recorder watch came with a detachable cord, so you didn't even have to reach down to start surreptitiously recording via tinny microphone. It features in Back to the Future, along with some other Seiko devices. The Ghostbuster and Marine are also part of the same series. All right, that's it guys. I hope you liked the video. Check back in a week or two for the sequel, every single weird Seiko I could find. I really appreciate you all. Goodbye.